Good morning, everybody. Hello. Welcome to our Facebook Live uh, morning meeting. We're here today with Elvis, our California king snake, just as a fair warning to those of you guys who may not really like snakes. We are going to be, um, we are going to be with Elvis, our beautiful uh, California king snake ambassador. He is very, very sweet, very lovable. Um, but just for those of you guys who don't like snakes, just be aware, we're going to be meeting Elvis today. Uh, we're going to be exploring some enrichment with him. We love to provide our snakes with enrichment. They really, really enjoy um, and are very interactive with all sorts of different toys and setups that we give them. So we're just going to chat about a few of the different ways that we play with our friends and make sure that they're mentally stimulated. Um, hi, buddy. This is Elvis. Good morning, Elvis. Hello. Elvis is um, a California king snake, like I mentioned. And these guys are a pet trade species of snakes. So they are not native to our area. Um, Elvis did originally come to us from, um, from a teacher who had him as a classroom pet for many, many years. You can find these guys in... Um, in pet stores across the country, not just in California. They are a wild species in California, but they are primarily found in living in, um, you know, living in the wild in California. So um, king snakes are a beautiful um, type of constrictor snake. So they are a type of snake that will wrap around their food to um, to kill their prey instead of poison it, like a venomous snake or. Um, and these guys will um, will wrap around and eat other species of snakes. So they have incredibly strong constrictions. They are very, very powerful in their ability to um, to wrap around their prey. Uh, hello from everybody. Hello uh, from Xander. Hello, El uh, Jessica. Hi, Sue. Hello. Um, so Elvis here has been with us for probably somewhere around. 18 years. Good morning, Penelope. Hello. And um, he is about probably um, about that old. So um, he has been with us for a long, long time. And he is a wonderful ambassador and he really, really enjoys his enrichment. So we're going to just talk about some of the ways that Elvis, um, that Elvis gets his playtime. Um, so the first thing that you may be hearing in the background, and I'm going to flip the camera so you guys can see this, is um, this crinkly kind of tube that we have for him. Um, I'll show you guys. He's very, very fast. So this may be a little challenging, but we have this crinkly tube mat thing that he really loves to explore to get inside of. What's in there? What's in there? Hello. I'm giving you guys a little sneak peek of the next thing. Uh, the other thing that we will do um, with these guys is provide them with all sorts of enrichment in their tanks. So they do live in, um, in tanks that are, you know, large enough for them. And these fleeces are a great way to enrich their environments. We also uh, will provide them with lots of climbing structures. What are you doing, bud? And uh, the other thing that we'll do is just like... Uh, just like all of our other ambassadors, we will um, we will take them on walks. So um, these guys love to slither, and you can see Elvis is really fast. So it is a challenge, and we do it in a very controlled way and make sure he stays with us. But we will occasionally take him on uh, walks and let him explore in the grass, things like that. Um, the other fun toy that we like to uh, to use to play with these guys is this uh, tube setup that I have here. So what we've done is we've taken some paper towel rolls and uh, cut them up to allow these guys to um, explore them without the fear of getting stuck in them. And Elvis really seems to enjoy these tubes. They love to tunnel, they love to burrow. Hi, bud. So we, oh, it's okay. I know. He's a little skittish. So they love these um, these tube enrichment things. We will sometimes put um, different essential oils on the cardboard and let them smell. Hi, buddy. You're a good boy. Hi. 
Um, and these are just another way that we can that we can let these guys play. Uh, we did cut the paper towel tubes in half because they are, um, you know, he is a little bit wide around the middle and he for a long time has been on a diet and is a little bit chubby, but, um, but he, so we didn't want him to get stuck in any of these paper towel tubes, but he does seem to like them and enjoy them. He's exploring right now. Hello. Good morning, uh, Theo. Good morning, Naomi from Rhode Island. Good morning, Katie. Hello. Good morning, Ray and Lizanne. Good morning. Yeah, so he seems to enjoy this, um, this tube enrichment here. Hello. Um, these guys are very, very good um, smellers. They have incredible senses of smell. And um, so sometimes, you know, a different scent, like a different um, essential oil on one of these cardboard pieces or um, a spritz of some sort of a flower perfume is a great way to enrich these guys because it's, um, they use their noses so, so well. Um, he can hear me. He uh, does have does have pretty good hearing, but they also rely a lot on vibrations that they can feel. But they do hear. They don't have the most excellent hearing. Are you exploring in the air? Yeah. Nice job, buddy. Hi. Good job. Yeah, he really enjoys this. Um, and they, um, they also are very, very good climbers. So a lot of these snakes love to climb. And we provide them with all sorts of climbing structures in their, hello, in their, um, in their enclosures. So Elvis has this tube that he can climb up into and sleep in if he wants. Um, Zipper has a hoop that he can climb into and a little basket. Uh, so they love to explore the vertical space in their tank. And they, um, they are very, very good at, at doing that. They love to climb. Good morning, Chuck. Yeah, so uh, the essential oils are something that we want to be safe with. We don't ever make them ingest them or anything, and we don't want them to ingest them because they can be really powerful um, and potent. But we uh, we do like to just give them the option to smell them. That's something that we we like to do. So, good morning, Ryan. Hello. Um, and in zoos, they'll actually do this with um, different essential oils, and they they'll use also different. Um, you know, urine sources. So if they have like a cheetah, they might spray some like zebra urine in the enclosure to stimulate their brains and to get them, um, you know, excited that there might be a prey animal in the area. So when this guy smells mice, he gets really excited. We have to be careful to wash our hands after handling mice around this guy because he can smell really, really well and might smell the mice on our hands and and think that it's prey. So we will um, provide them with scent and they explore their worlds through smell quite frequently. And the other thing is that um, they can actually smell in water. So um, scents can be dissolved in water or um, in humidity in the air and they're able to smell them. So they're very, very good smellers. It's a major way that they that they find their prey. They also have um, thermal vision, so they can actually see in the UV spectrum, or in the heat spectrum rather, they can see um, scents that, or they can see heat signatures, just like a thermal imaging camera, and that is another way that they're able to find their prey. They can, um, they can kind of see that it's, hi buddy, they can see that it's, uh, that there's a warm spot where a prey animal is and that allows them to hunt for them. Um, so Chuck, he was originally a classroom pet. The, you can find these snakes in pet stores throughout the country and we always recommend thinking long and hard about owning a reptile before buying one, um, especially one that's bred in captivity. There are lots of different rescues out there where you can, um, where you can rescue a reptile and um, and this guy was a classroom pet for many, many years. And then um, after, 
uh, the teacher retired and couldn't take care of him anymore, she uh, gave him to us. So we we got him that way. He was kind of a rescue. And uh, we really only have two species of ambassadors that are not native, and they're both our snake species. Um, so Elvis, our king snake, and Zipper, our corn snake, are both non-native species, just because our local species of snakes are very skittish and would be hard to um, would be hard to keep as an ambassador. They probably wouldn't enjoy being on display or being handled. So we do have um, constrictor snakes in Maine. In fact, we only have constrictor snakes in Maine. The snake species we have in Maine are all not venomous. So we're very lucky in that regard. We don't have to worry about rattlesnakes or anything in Maine. Um, and so we use these guys to help teach the differences between constrictors and venomous snakes to kids, but they are not native. And the reason they're actually called king snakes is because they are able to wrap around their snake prey and eat other species of snakes, including rattlesnakes. So these guys are able to consume snakes that have venom and venom gl glands without themselves being being um, envenomed, which is really impressive. They can kind of put up with a small amount of that. So they are very, very cool. And they are wild in California um, in certain er areas. They live in the desert and, um, and love to live in like rocky, arid areas. Hello. Carolyn um, and Molly want to know why we named him Elvis. So that's a good question. He is from California and you can see this beautiful black and white pattern. I think those are both inspirations for his name. Um, and they, um, and I think that is why his name was originally El Elvis. I don't think we named him. I think he came with that name, but it's certainly fitting. And he's the king, right? California, black and white, king. I think it all adds up to Elvis. Katie would like to, yes, Katie, cleaning their enclosures can be quite icky. Um, we always feed our snakes in a separate enclosure to kind of avoid the majority of that, but their snake poop is very gross. It is pretty icky. So, um, so it is certainly something to consider before ever getting a snake as a pet is if you are prepared to, if you are prepared to care for them and to clean for them. They are very uh, messy. They do eat live prey in some instances. Um, they, many snakes are raised on live prey and if they are, they have a hard time switching over to like a dead animal. So um, many animals do and snakes don't like to eat dead mice. So you may have to feed your snake life prey and that is hard. Um, Rebecca, I am not very sure. They must have um, anti-venom circulating in their bloodstream or molecules that act as anti-venom. I am not sure of the exact chemicals in their blood that allow them to do that, but they are able to withstand a certain amount of venom from the rattlesnakes that they live near which is just amazing. So Chuck, we expect that Elvis is somewhere around 18 years old. Um, and they can, 18, 19, they can usually live into their 20s in captivity, but he is certainly an older gentleman. He um, has been with us for about half of that time. I believe he was a classroom pet for 10 years. So he's been with us for almost as much time as that. And he's a wonderful, wonderful ambassador. Um, yeah, so he is, he is going on 20, we think. Hi, buddy. Good job. And that's a pretty average lifespan for these guys in captivity. They can live into their 20s, maybe up to 25. Reptiles can live a lot longer than other pets, so that's another consideration. And we, um, we love our snakes so dearly, but they are, um, are definitely a different type of animal to take care of. Um, you can also see how long Elvis is. So Elvis is about five feet long um, in total, and um, he might not look that large, but that is certainly a long animal to care for. And um, you have to make sure that their tanks are big enough to accommodate him. So like this tank here is just for enrichment and feeding. We don't use this tank as his permanent um, home. His real tank is about like twice the size of this to allow him to fully stretch out. And then in the new facility, we're very excited. We're going to be building tanks that are even taller than this. So they'll have a lot of vertical space to allow them to climb and explore. They really love to do that. So we're very excited to provide these guys with large tanks. Hi. 
And um, we also will put all sorts of different items in their enclosures to encourage them to explore and use the space. They, um, hi, they really love to move around and in the wild they would occupy a lot of different spaces. Hi, you wanna come out now? Hi, buddy. I know, I know. Um, Elvis, hi. Uh, Elvis is a really, really great uh, way for especially kids to interact with snakes for the first time in a safe way, in a way that we can um, we can encourage them to not fear snakes. A lot of the um, the myths about snakes are not true. A lot, um, you know, the myth that they're slimy is generally not true. They're actually scaly and usually pretty dry. Um, I'll put you back. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so a lot of the myths about snakes are not true that you hear. Um, the snakes in our area are pretty harmless. We have fairly small snakes that live in our area. Um, they also are uh, typically, hi, typically great uh, predators of uh, small mammals like mice and rodents, which are, um, you know, sometimes considered pests to a lot of people. So they are very good for rodent control. If you have a snake outside your house, that's a good sign that you might not have mice inside your house. So they're really great for that. Um, they also are not known to attack or hurt anybody unless they, um, unless they, hi, hello, unless they, um, unless they feel threatened. So they are usually very, very docile and just want to get away if they feel, if they feel under, under threat. Chuck, I'm not, I thought I put a donation, I think, I think I do have a donation button on this video. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, I wonder if there is something not showing up on your end, but I do see on my end that I have a donation, but a donation button set up for this video. So if you are unable to donate through this video, you can donate on our directly on our Facebook page, just the general Facebook page for the um, for Center for Wildlife. And if you are not able to donate on Facebook, we have donation buttons all over our website as well, www.thecenterforwildlife.org. And we really, really appreciate all of your donations. Thank you guys so much for donating to the Center for Wildlife. We are so, so lucky to have about 65% um, of all of our funding come from a uh, from small donations from individuals like you guys. So a large part of the work that we do is funded through your individual donations, and it really does help these guys. Um, you know, they eat mice, they have houses they need to live in, we, they have staff that need to care for them, and we, um, we really appreciate every penny that goes into to helping them to stay safe and well cared for. We also have um, about 100 patients right now that are getting cared for as well in our medical clinic and we're receiving you know around 30 to 40 calls on our wildlife assistance hotline every single day so here are some of our patients right now going out to their enclosures <laughs> um so uh your donations go a long way to help care for those guys what a good job elvis if anyone has any questions about elvis or king snakes or our ambassadors or the center in general i'm happy to answer them they are all um you know fascinating here with elvis all day we um we would normally also go for a walk in this tall grass out here but i am um cautious to do that <laughs> on video i want to make sure my full attention is on elvis while he's exploring because he is very quick and could get away so we try to make sure that we're we're a hundred percent on um and and paying attention when we're walking our snakes they're super super fast yeah good boy are you done with these are you done with these tubes yeah so this is just one of the enrichment um games that we like to use uh we also are in the process of building a like a construction of uh like a pegboard something you might uh use to kind of exercise with but for snakes so that they can slither up the pegs up the wall um that will be really really fun for these guys once it's built 
Hi guys, snakes generally are just really big fans of enrichment um, and toys in general. They really like exploring new things and new scents. We provide, we try to switch out the fleeces and the structures in their enclosures whenever we can um, to allow them to um, to explore all sorts of different things. I'm just getting in back out again. Hi bud, I know, I know, you're so excited. Um, the other thing that's really important for our snakes is that we allow them to um, moderate their temperature, regulate their temperature as much as possible. So uh, for Elvis, that means providing him with a warm and a cool side to his enclosure. Um, if they want to be warm, they can go to the, the warm side. If they want to be cold, they can go to the cool side. And these guys are actually unable to regulate their own body temperatures. So that's why we call them cold-blooded animals is because they're actually, if it's cold outside, they're going to be cold on the inside. And if it's warm outside, they're going to be warm. So when he's in the sun and he's, um, he's moving around, he's nice and active. That's a sign that he's warm. And then if they, um, if they are cool, if they're in the dark, if they don't have a source of heat, they will be cold on the inside. So that's why you see a lot of snakes out basking on rocks um, in the sun trying to absorb some of that heat. Good boy. Carolyn uh, and Molly ask, can they be territorial? Yes, absolutely. In the wild, um, these guys will be territorial, although usually they'll just protect their, uh, their den and then they'll go hunt um, out in the world. And that's not usually you know, can, they don't usually consider that their territory, but they will protect their little rock den that they live in um, and that, that space. But they usually aren't, you know, taking over crazy large spaces of territory. They're gonna um, really just use as much as they need to hunt. So that's a really good question. Hi, bud. Hi, what are you doing? They're also incredibly muscular. So um, a lot of people think snakes are slightly, you know, slippery and wiggly and don't have, uh, there's a myth out there that they don't have bones, <laughs> um, but they do. They have tons of bones. They have more bones than we do. And um, this whole long length of their body has a backbone that runs all the way down there to their tail. And coming off of that backbone are actually hundreds of little tiny ribs. So just like our ribs, they come off of their backbone. And in between each rib, there's a little tiny muscle that constricts and or contracts and helps them to slither like this. So when they're slithering, they're actually using all of those muscles. And that's why when you feel them, they feel so squishy because they're mostly muscle. Um, Elvis here also it has a lot of fat on him too because he is on a diet and he's an older gentleman and needs to needs to lose some weight. I know, um, but they are very very muscular creatures and have a, quite an extensive skeletal system. So they are um, they are very very bony. Uh, the other myth about um, about these guys and their skeletons. You want to go back in there is that they unhinge their jaw when they eat. They actually don't really have hinges on their jaw bones to begin with. So <laughs> he's like, oh my goodness. Um, so when they eat, they actually um, have ligaments and tendons that connect the four pieces of their jaw together and they stretch their mouth open wide when they eat, but they don't have a hinge joint in their jaw like we do. They just have four unattached pieces of bones that are connected with ligaments and tendons that they can stretch open when they want to eat. So they don't really truly unhinge their jaw. Um, that's another very common snake myth, although they can open their mouths to a crazy, crazy amount uh, to allow them to eat large, ma like larger things than you would expect, like a mouse or um, Sometimes they eat frogs, sometimes they'll eat birds, things like that. So they eat a lot of different things. Of course, king snakes are famous for eating other snakes, uh, which is why they have such a strong um, constriction. They have to be able to catch and eat a snake that is slithering around. Snakes are also cold-blooded animals. They require less oxygen as a reptile, so they have to be able to wrap around them for longer and more... Um, more hard than they would have to wrap around a mammal. So these guys are very, very powerful. Yes, are you sniffing? 
You're a good boy. Thank you so much, Ryan, for donating. That's so sweet of you. We really miss you, and we hope we can welcome you back to the Center to Volunteer very soon. We're working on um, opening slowly and making sure everybody is safe here. Um, we have, you know, just our staff and um, MCAs, and we just welcome back our first intern. So I think after that, after we get um, the approval to have some people outside, then we will definitely, we will definitely welcome um, you back, Ryan. We do miss you dearly. Um, Chuck, he would probably not be able to survive in Maine because these guys are not really used to the cold winters that we have, although they are a um, species that lives in the desert where it can get incredibly cold at night. So they are able to go into periods of um, torpor where they don't really use any calories or anything like that. Um, it's called estivation for these sorts of animals that go into kind of a daily um, or nightly rather routine where they are very cold. But um, that is not as cold as it would get here in the winters in Maine. So they don't have the proper behaviors that al would uh, allow them to like bury underground or anything like that. So they most likely would not survive in the wild up here in Maine. It is probably too cold for them here. Um, and the snakes that we do have that li live in Maine and survive the winters do so by going very, very far underground below the frost line. And you'll see um, them emerging in the springtime. So our snakes have different behaviors that allow them to get through our cold Maine winters that these guys would not have. So they probably wouldn't make it. You enjoying it? He's like, I'm just enjoying being out in the sun. That's another great way that we enrich these guys is just by getting them out in the sunshine, making sure that they um, get outside because our snakes, you know, we do try to have all of our animals living outside when it's possible, but our snakes are obviously not native and need all sorts of special um, habitat requirements. So they do live indoors. We have Elvis living in our education hall at the moment. Um, and then in the winter when it's cold, he'll go back into our main building um, but he has all sorts of lights and heat lamps and heat, heat pads, all sorts of things to keep him warm. Um, uh, because even here now in, at night, it gets really cold. Um, you know, 50 degrees at night is kind of the threshold that we use for Elvis. And, um, you know, it's been below that some nights. So we try to make sure he stays nice and warm. Thank you guys so much for um, for watching and for donating. We really, really appreciate it. If you have any other king snakes about the center, I'm happy to answer them here. Um, and we will um, probably feed him after this. He is on a diet, so he eats every other week. And he gets a small dead mouse that's been frozen and then thawed out. Um, he is good. He um, usually always eats. He's um, a pretty good eater, but uh, because of that, he um, is now on a, he is on a little bit of a diet. So we careful make, carefully make sure that he doesn't eat too many mice too often, um, that he, you know, gets his exercise, things like that. So snakes can get fat, believe it or not. Um, it's something that you would not necessarily expect, but um, they get fat rolls, <laughs> they get um, they get lethargic. So we try to make sure that as he gets older, he's in good health and good condition. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We really, really appreciate it. And we will see you all later. Um, and we appreciate all of your donations. Uh, we will see you tomorrow uh, with another Facebook Live. Uh, Kristen will be here with, um, with one of our owls. So we're very excited about that. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you again later.